Second by Dixie Newman. All in favor? Motion carries four and Ms. Newman, do you have a vote on this? Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Um, the rules are suspended. Would you read the additions? I apologize. It does not pass unanimously. It's six to one. With Tisdale being in opposition. It Hello. To our consent agenda, we're substituting item 5J, exhibit A only. We're adding item 50, resolution authorizing change order number one to the construction agreement with WC4 Trucking. We're adding 5P, resolution authorizing change order number one for Eagle Point Park. And we're also adding item 5Q, resolution authorizing change order for Oscar Renda. Thank you, Lucy. Do I have the move and amend it? I have a motion to move as amended by George Lawrence. Um, do I have a second? Second by Felix Skines. All in favor? All against? Motion passes 6 to 1 with Paul Tisdale in opposition. We'll start with the presentation agenda. Mr. Mayor, your report. Did you intend to make your mask look like you're Amish? No. <laughs> um, anybody have any questions for the mayor regarding his report? Uh, the question of uh, the buildings, like the visitor center, and uh, are we renting anything out since they shrunk this out? So anybody has a reception coming up that can't use the buildings? only have 10 it also says but other facilities that have other restrictions you could you go by whatever those restrictions are so we're reading that as a civic center is 25 percent 25 percent of a thousand is 250 so we can go all the way to 250 with all of course all of the requirements for ma masks and everything else yeah. so uh, we are still getting requests for using those facilities but we're holding to the, the numbers that, that the, the you know that the governor has proposed to us and nothing's changed in terms of uh, the numbers of attendance. Uh, his, his last executive order said uh, tw 20 outside, 10 inside, but it also had the caveat that if the facility had other restrictions, you could go by those other restrictions, in which, and that we're reading that as whatever the limit occupant, occupants, the occupancy for the facility is times 25%. So the visitor center would be 25%? Like at the top floor at the business of, center of, of that of that of whatever yes, whatever room I mean, they're asking whatever room they're asking to use. Okay. So a small small gatherings would still be okay. I mean a big you're yeah. not going to have 300 people in the visitor center though. Capacity down 25 percent. Yeah, right. The All people right. taking the reservations are making people aware of what the restrictions are. Now, I just wanted to check a couple people to ask me about that. I actually been invited to a wedding at the visitor center. I was just wondering if they still have a reception there. That's what I was trying to find out. I appreciate it. Any other questions for the mayor? Mayor, there being none, you still got the floor? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, you want to go forward on that? Census, we're doing a little better on census. Uh, citywide, we're at 58.1% of people who got something in the mail that have responded to it. 
So that's ticking up. It's actually uh, above the state's uh, average right now, and it's, it's actually higher than we were at this point in 2010. That's good. It, we are lagging in some of the wards, and I won't, I won't call them out, but some of the, some of the wards, and I'll share this, the, the map with you, that are, are, that are lagging behind the average, that we've needed some help. Have they given us um, a data that will help us localize where the areas are in our wards? Yeah, it's, they report it by, not by ward, but by census tract, but you can see the map. Okay. You can see. I have another question for the mayor. The address is, I think, what's going to drive it. So, you know what we're not seeing on these percentages? We're not seeing somebody who didn't get anything in the mail. This is 58% of somebody that got something in the mail is a respondent. But there are people like young uh, recruits at Houston Air Force Base who are responding, and we'll see their data eventually what didn't get anything in the mail. So it does ask for a code. When I logged on, it asked for a code, but it does let you log in by your address. So you don't necessarily need a code. Thanks for that help. A question. George Lawrence. Papa, have we got all the uh, employees of the city registered? Have y'all working on that? That's a lot of people when you go to the families and everything. So that right there is a lot of people. We can make sure we'll get that, that should be easy to get done. And the other thing I noticed you've been working on in the Chief Miller is uh, we've been doing all the burnouts on our beautiful bricks. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we, we call that in. We're making a yeah. all right. Is it, all right. Is that going to be hard to clean up? He's going to do it with a toothbrush. I mean, the, the yeah. burnout. Can you He'll get it off pretty easy? You got to do the whole road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we, we're, we're going to make an example. No, I'm just saying, just cleaning it up, how much trouble is yeah, going to be uh, cleaning yeah, it up? I'm not sure, you know, with the bricks and, and you know, whether we can do it chemically or, 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 you know, just by brute force, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah, I mean, you spend a lot of money on the road to make it look nice. Yep. It looks pretty bad, though, black box, so. Yep. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, appreciate it. We'll move on to the council report. Mr. Lawrence, I'll allow you to continue. You want me to do first? <laughs> Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know that our COVID-19 is running, but you know when you have Alabama and Louisiana shut down, everybody comes to Biloxi. We have a lot of people in town. We just got to take care of it. And they're testing way more people than ever. So there's a lot more tests. So there's a lot more people testing positive. Now the ICUs, and I don't always tell you all about that, both of them are up. You know, but that's a long-term facility. There's a lot of people from the long-term care facility are being put into the hospital. And there's roughly 278 people now in ICU, and 150 of them was on the ventilators. So that number has went up, just bumped a lot. But there's way more people being tested, and they take care of them. But they also have almost 30,000 people been cured, I guess you could call it, or had it, and went past them. So those are good things. But it's just something we got to fight through. So we'll take care of that. City of Bluxa always come back on top, so we'll do well. Thank you. That's it. How's that good enough? 
Th that's great. That's just <laughs> 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 Councilman Tisdale. <laughs> Councilwoman Newman. <laughs> Councilman Glavin. Uh, the only thing I want to follow up with, if I can, uh, on, on a little paving project, uh, 300 feet of uh, blacktop. Uh, this isn't in my ward, but I got a call from Matt Langlinez. Uh, it's the Curry subdivision on McDonald. Is that in your ward? Has he contacted you about it? Yeah, okay. Well, I'll let you handle it then. He, he just asked me if I'd check on it. I'll let Councilman Newman take care of our constituents. I have no report. That's it. Thank you. Councilman Gines. Yeah, I had a great meeting with the uh, mayor of Walt, um, finishing up the infrastructure. Thank you guys for meeting with me. I uh, wanted to also, this is on. Can you even do it? I want to bring up um, COVID-19. We're having uh, more testing in the community. Uh, we're two over at the Civic Center on Thursday, and it's going to be from 8 to 1 o'clock. So I encourage anyone who thinks they may have a symptom to get over and get tested. I too have been affected uh, in my family. We got a person that had uh, contracted the COVID-19. That was Memorial going to do that, right? Memorial Hospital is going to? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Memorial Hospital. Yeah. Memorial Hospital at Westport is providing the tests. So um, I just encourage everyone to come out. It's all about protecting our community. I also want to just throw in a side note, Mayor, you know, we, we still have a hospital down by Edgewater Mall that could be a contingency. Mm -hmm. respirators and we run out of beds. My understanding is that facility is pretty much ready to and ready to go. So it wouldn't take but a week to get it up and so mm -hmm. throw that out there. Maybe that can translate up to the governor's office uh, from the standpoint. Uh, next weekend, I encourage uh, all my council members to donate. We're having a backpack giveaway for kids back to school. Mm -hmm. It'll be August the 1st. Henry Beck Park at one o'clock. Because of COVID-19, we'll probably just come fill the backpacks up, uh, have an assembly line and drop them in there. Want to donate? Know that um, you know parents are afraid now of sending their kids back to school. Even if we do distant learning, our kids are still going to need to uh, have material and supplies at home. Uh, I know the mayor had an initiative of making sure. Um, all the homes in Biloxi have a way of uh, computing. And right now we need it more than ever with our kids that are out there. Maybe areas like the housing authority uh, areas or the um, Hope Six areas, we need to look at a way of making those areas, which can't quite afford it, to, to do some type of broadband right. where kids can get on for free. I know different companies, they have like $9 per household at a student rate. And I don't know about Spark Life yet. I understand that we may need to inquire if we can get a special rate for our kids who, who, who parents decide not to send them back home. Right. So we need to kind of start looking at those things. Uh, like I say, put contingency plans in place for educational purposes and also with uh, our business. My, my idea on, on some of that, you know, there is some broadband money for rural broadband. I mean, we could couple that and, and you know, if it, it takes us, you know, uh, we've got 13,000 homes to possibly light up and, and some of those uh, monies may be available through the rural broadband and, you know, dollars that, that will come into the state. So that's a good thought to see if we can uh, piggyback, you know, for, with that. Yes. Thank so, you. So thank you. Thank you again. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman Gines. Councilman Barrett. I just got a couple things. Um, number one, uh, July 30th, we're also having a testing, or uh, the county's doing testing out at the Wool Market Community Center on Old Wool Market Road from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock. I think that's through Memorial as well. Uh, it's July 30th. And then um, the mayor and I will, will get hit up on this again Thursday, so I was going to ask you, the striping on Jimberg Road, uh, I know that we had an issue with mailboxes, and some of those have never been moved, and it's been sh it's been finished for a long time now. And um, I don't know if we're responsible for it or if the county's responsible, but 
there's no lights on that road at night and it's just dark. So even if we just strike the middle of the road until we figure out the mailbox situation, um, that's something that, that I, if, if there's any way possible, we need to get that done as soon, you know, as soon as we can. And I don't know, I know that we can't touch the mailboxes because the property lines comes to the road, it's on private property or whatever. But uh, I, I, whatever, and let me know if there's something I can do to help, but um, we, we need to get the, the sides of the road striped too because that's one of the roads that when you go off the edge of the road, you're in the ditch sort of deal. And so um, what, whatever we need to do to to work with the county or whatever to go forward with that, but it's been it's been a good while now that it's went without being striped. Well, well, it's, the county was supposed to stripe it. We'll talk to the county, see if there's an issue. Yeah, uh, and I know on I the mailboxes. Down it. On the mailboxes, I think we, what we need to do is run another um, paragraph in our media yep. uh, outreach uh, to remind people that how far their mailbox has to be back from the road. Yeah, and I drove down there, and I think there's only one or two that actually stick out, but I think the problem is the machine ha extends out over the road a little bit whenever they're, they go through there, and so the mailboxes that aren't actually on the road are too close to take that machine is the only thing that I can figure mm -hmm because there's not really any that stick out over the road. And so um, I don't know, you know how the machine's set up or if it extends beyond yeah. where it's spraying, what would yeah. cause that issue, but. We, we, ran, we ran a diagram earlier uh, when the road was being paved asking the people to move their mailboxes back and there's a diagram that the, in the diagram that shows the dimensions that they have to be back from the road, the post office uh, regulations. So we'll run that again just to remind them. Um, sort of, I, I, I kind of feel like um, the ones that don't want to move their mailboxes pretty soon they'll they'll learn they'll get moved on their own get moved on their <laughs> own <laughs> pretty soon sooner or later they're gonna knock them all over but we'll run that the diagram again and ask people to please move their mailboxes back and um, we'll, we'll talk to the county about the striping and Christy if you would remind me yeah. all right. that's all I have thank you <clears throat> they've got Not the striping Barrett. machine um, I don't have much. Christy, I spoke with you earlier about some of the road paving. I just wanted to know if we had any information or an update regarding the underwater vegetation or ha is there any potential resolution to dredging that area? Have we come up with anything? <clears throat> and so for those of you that are in the dark in this conversation, around the Beauchene area, the Beauchene area, yeah. there's I mean, there's still debris in there from Katrina. You, you can, when the water's low, you can see refrigerators and ovens and different items out there, but apparently we can't get a permit to dredge it because there's underwater vegetation, so we haven't gotten the approval from DMR, is it? That's right, and we just entered into a contract amendment with Seymour Engineering, I believe it was last week, to start doing some of that additional work with, with DMR for us to start the process about getting some approvals and some mitigation for the, um, they call them SAVs, submerged aquatic vegetation. So we're, we just entered the contract, Seymour's gonna start talking to DMR for us to see what we can do. So is this an, so we're optimistic about this. I, yeah, I think so. I, they seem to, so far DMR, from what Seymour has told me, because they've been speaking to them on our behalf for this, that they, um, they seem to be open to something, because if they weren't, we wouldn't even we wouldn't even be pursuing this at all. If they just said no, we'd be like, um, I don't, you know, what else can we do? But they seem to be open to some sort of ideas. I don't think it's been done before, but we're gonna we're gonna try. Okay. Sir, the, the uh, dredging plan is done. Yes, and our and our citywide dredging plan is also complete. Um, we have the final draft now. If anybody, if anybody would like, it covers all of our areas that we areas we've done, areas we haven't done yet. So we kind of have a better idea of what we need to be doing um, instead of just kind of skipping around like we've been. We're trying to come up with something uh, more concrete. So if anybody wants to see that, just let me know. We have a copy. Mike's got a copy, and I've got a copy. I will, I have, do you know if we were able to squeeze in the uh, Patricia Place, the little canal? Back behind the golf course. It was course. in the dredging plan. Okay. Um, and I need to I need to add that probably to Seymour's contract to go ahead and get a permit on that area. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Add that. Right. Well, the nice thing about a dredging plan is we're going to treat treat dredging like we do streets street paving. 
as maintenance work that has to be scheduled all. I mean, instead of having to react to the squeaky wheel, we can have a plan. So we could say this year, these are the three areas we're gonna dredge. And next year, we'll be working on the permit for the three we're gonna do this year and then, and so forth and so on. So, so we can get, get permit. Permitting can be done like a year out. So we don't, not held up. A, an example of the usefulness of the dredging plan is Councilman Glavin sent me one, a request for somebody who wanted their boat ramp dredged, and that was in um, which? Hills. Holly Hills. What we've, we've already responded to them, at least in an interim basis, but we looked at the dredging plan, and the dredging plan showed that the, the, there was already four and a half feet of water there, so any, we were not going to be able to dredge any more than that. Um, but we'll go back and validate to see that that really is four and a half feet. So, so the, I think the dredging, uh, the dredging's long-term plan, the, basically a, a long-term plan, will allow us to, to not only get ahead of ourselves on the permitting, but be able to answer, to respond to people about when they're when we're going to get to them. And Mr. Leonard, I just want to clarify something on the dredging plan. That four and a half feet doesn't it stipulate that we can uh, maintain it? at that four and a half feet over a period of time? Doesn't the permit allow us to do that over a period of time, maintain the four and a half feet? Uh, I, think, good, you know, I think I, what I've read. I honestly don't know the answer to that. do continual maintenance for a period of sometimes okay. one year. Our harbors, I think they let us do, is there anything else in here, but maybe 10 years on our harbors. So I don't know what they are on this recent dredging that we did, but yes, generally we can go back in there within a, a year, maybe five years, and do that without having to go through this whole process we went through. Our permit stays open for a while. Okay, if I, if I read it correctly, I just want to, I'm trying to recollect, I think it is 10 years, even be. even beyond the harbors to the recent I, stuff I, that I'm we did. I'm sure, because we, we do more dredging in harbors than right. anything, so I know what those are, so that would make sense. Okay, thank you. You're thank you, Ms. Lovata, the Director of Engineering, and Mike Leonard, I appreciate it. That's the end of my report. We will move to the public agenda, citizens' comments. We have a total of 45 minutes, if you would, please. Keep your comments to three minutes per person. I'll start on the right-hand side of the room, my left-hand side. If, you, if anybody would care to speak, please come up to the microphone. State your name, sign in. Anybody on the left-hand side of the room or my right-hand side of the room that would care to speak? Anyone in the back of the room? There being none, we'll move on to the policy agenda. We'll begin with the ordinance, A, Lucy. Hello. Ordinance to amend the LDO to amend tax change for fences and et cetera. I move. I have a motion by George Lawrence. Do I have a second? Seconded by Paul Tisdale. There'll be no discussion. This is a first reading. We'll move to ordinance B. <clears throat> Hello. Ordinance to amend the LDO to to make changes to the WF waterfront zone. Do I have a motion? Or excuse me, this was moved this up. was previously moved by George Lawrence and Paul Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence, I'll give you the floor. Yeah, Jerry. I know uh, this is all about the, the waterfront zoning, which was really set up to be pretty much the gaming. And so why are we adjusting some of these things and putting conditional use on some of these things and permitted use? And you got a couple of these things you got on the second page, you got a golf court private or public is, is a conditional use. Then you got a swimming pool as a principal use, conditional use. What is that supposed to mean? That means that, uh, uh, well, for, first of all, let me say this. What we're doing is we're going through the land development ordinance. You know, our ordinance is 10 years old now, and it's the midway point of when we adopted the comprehensive plan. So what we're doing is going through the LDO page by page and addressing some issues. There may be, have been some errors. There may have been uh, some things that need to change at this point. You know, we've had 
uh, a lot of evolutions of technology and things like that that may have changed the way that we look at things. So that's the reason that we're doing this. <clears throat> now, uh, we didn't just go in and single out waterfront. We're going to have uh, more changes coming to the council for consideration. But with the waterfront, one of the things that we wanted to do was to address some of those things that uh, may be associated with the convention center, for example. Um, you'll notice that that's, that's one of the things that's, that's in there is to allow uh, a conference center, convention center, training center. Uh, also, usually when you have a convention center, there may need be need for a helicopter pad so, you know, those were things that were either prohibited or only allowed as a conditional use in the uh, land development ordinance. So what we do is we go through and we look at each of these things on the line item and try to determine, uh, is this prohibited? Why is it prohibited? Should it be prohibited? Is it something that really should be prohibited or is it something that we need to take a look at to allow it to go in. For example, um, like uh, schools uh, are allowed in any zone districts. Um, but, I'm sorry, uh, colleges and, and universities, uh, one was allowed, one was not allowed, and it just didn't make any sense. So what we did is go back and make recommendations that, you know, if you're gonna allow the schools to be in any zone district, why not allow a college or a university with certain restrictions be allowed. So basically what we're doing is just trying to apply some common sense to some of those things that were prohibited here. And if there wasn't a legitimate reason for prohibiting them, then maybe open the door to allow them. What is prohibited in here? Which one do, that you can't have? Well, uh, is the P stands for permitted or prohibited? No, P means permitted. It would be permitted by right. Well, C, you keep saying the other thing. C well, means it's conditional help. use. And in the table that we're talking about, if it was left blank, that means it's prohibited. And there's a specific statement in there that says anything that's not specifically allowed is prohibited. So what we did is took a look at some of those things that were prohibited and just kind of opened the door for it um, or made recommendations to open the door for it. And you got the game establishment on the second page. You got a number and everything by it. And the other recreational entertainment, you got a number by that. What is that supposed to mean? What are the numbers for? Is that just a code number for the? Well, some of, some of these, there were no changes to it. Like a gaming <coughs> establishment, for example, was conditional use under the previous ordinance, and it remains a conditional use now because there are certain uses that you have to take a look at with a gaming establishment. So any, anyone that comes in with a proposal to do a gaming establishment is still going to have to go through. Uh, We're not talking about that, Jerry. We're not talking about the next step. We're trying to get these rules straight. We know what they have to do. It says gaming. Why is that a, a conditional use when that was the waterfront was created for gaming? Why is that a conditional use? That should be permitted. Yeah, it, it's a conditional use because it's part of a PDGE, which is a planned district gaming establishment. And the gaming part of it has to meet certain requirements in order to be allowed. We have to take a look at the, the whole picture, you know, the, the parking and everything else. So it's a conditional use. Uh, also, we have to make sure that they have gaming uh, commission approval. So that would be one of the conditions that we'd have to take a look at. Uh, there, there are certain things in our, that our ordinance allows, but it may require that we make sure that they have gaming commission approval or that they have DMR approval or DEQ approval before they can come to us to go through the process. Well, if they don't have the game and they can't have it anyway, so. Yes, sir. And, and, and we're not trying to throw any prohibitions up here. All we're trying to do is to make sure that the ordinance is clear. And when you explain these, these, what you're doing with these things and all these different changes, you know, we don't know what they were. Were they both the same or you have, what did you actually change? The, uh, a lot of stuff was already conditional use and permitted use anyway. Well, some were, and there were some that were conditional use that we moved to permitted use, like the, uh, like I mentioned, the convention center. Uh, you know, if, if you can have uh, uh, a gaming establishment in waterfront zoning, uh, why prohibit a convention center 
in waterfront zoning or so uh, why not allow it to, to come in as a as a permitted use so uh, it's just uh, it's really kind of a common sense thing that's what we're looking for that's what i said i mean do we actually had that a convention center was prohibited that was yes. written in there it was either prohibited or it was conditional use and we moved it to to permitted i'm so, let me get back over to the first page We moved it from conditional use to permitted use so that it would be allowed. I mean, that's, I mean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. just, we need to notice because, you know, you don't vote on none of this. So if we vote on one of these things that is bad, well, these people are going to come call on us. Well, you voted for that. And Mike Leonard always tells me that. You voted for it. You mm -hmm. know? So yeah. we got to make sure what you're doing is right. Yes, so you make these speeches, make these speeches to us, and that what we're dealing with, not what's going to happen next week, what we're dealing with right now. Well, so I was just trying to find out what we're doing. Everything's fine. Yes, sir. Just double checking with you. That's all. That's your job. That's right. And that, that's why we have a public hearing before the Planning Commission. And that's why we provide y'all with the minutes of the meetings so that you can actually read the, the context and the way that these things were taken. So uh, we're, all we're trying to do is to make the, the, um, uh, the LDO biggest, more user friendly. The bigger thing I couldn't find out exactly what we changed, if we changed anything. I would just make sure everything was correct. I, knew, I couldn't tell you what you actually changed in here. Maybe yes. somebody else read this a little different. I couldn't tell you if you well, changed in, anything or not. In retrospect, what we should have done is to put down what it was in the ordinance before and to put it down what it is in the ordinance now. And you should have done that. Yes, and we can provide you all with that. That won't be a yeah. problem. That's what we'd like to have, the, the information, the facts straight up. We'll, we'll do that differently next time. Right. Thank you. Councilman Tisdale, no further discussion. Anybody else on the council? There being none, I call for the question. All in favor, signal with the raise of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Move to ordinance C, please. Ordinance to amend the LDO, specifically related to fences and easements. This was again moved by Team Lawrence and Tisdale. Uh, Councilman Tisdale? Nothing? Councilman Lawrence? This is strictly about building fences on easements. Actually, actually, what this is is just a housekeeping thing. The council has already approved changing that one section in the code that uh, changed the who makes a decision about whether or not a fence is allowed on an easement. The ordinance, the LDO originally said that the director of public works would make that decision, but it's, there's been a change so that it would be the director of engineering that would do it. You've already approved it. What we're doing is going back because anytime you have a text change in the land development ordinance, the ordinance requires a public hearing. So we went back and had the public hearing after the fact. We're just bringing it back to you, but it's strictly a housekeeping thing. Thank you. Council, anything else? Call for the question. All in favor, signal to raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move to Ordinance D. Ordinance to amend the LDO specifically related to non-residential and planned development districts. Thank you again. This was moved by Team Tisdale Lawrence. Mr. Tisdale. This is correcting a Scrivener's error, Jerry, as I recall. Yeah, well, there, there are three things tied to this particular ordinance. Number one, we're removing live, work, dwelling. Uh, there was a Scrivener's error that showed a live, work, dwelling as a conditional use in RS5 zoning, which is single family. And a live, work, dwelling is a, a structure where you have 50% of the building being used for commercial purposes and 50% being used for residential purposes. The theory was to be able to like create a business where people could have a business downstairs and they could live upstairs, or if it's a, a, a one-story building, half and half. Uh, but a live-work dwelling brings a commercial element into single-family zoning that doesn't need to be there, so 
The answer is yes. That was a Scribner's error that this was allowed as a conditional use in RS-5. The, the second item under this ordinance is that um, college or university was not allowed in some of the single family zonings and in, uh, well, actually in all of the single family zonings was not allowed. So this is a part of what we talked about earlier where if somebody comes in and they meet the criteria to put in a college or a university, then it would be a permitted use. Um, government structures, schools are all allowed as a use by right in any zoning that we have. And so what this would do is open the door for college or university to, to do the same thing. They'd have to have a minimum land size and those kind of things, but it would be allowed. And then the last thing, well, the next to the last thing, is that uh, outdoor storage was uh, listed as a conditional use in industrial zoning. And uh, that seemed to be a typo because if you can't have outdoor storage in industrial zoning, where can you have it? So we felt it shouldn't be a conditional use, that it should be a use allowed by right. And then the last one had to do with RM10 zoning, which is residential multifamily, 10 units per acre. And the Scribner's era there was that originally there was a requirement for a 20 foot side setback and that should have been 12 and a half feet. So um, all four of these, yes or to answer your questions, were Scribner's errors that were just corrected. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Lawrence. Going back to the, the 20 feet and the 12 and a half feet, were the 20 feet ever voted on? We have very little RM10 uh, property in the city of Biloxi. I don't believe that we, since this ordinance came out, I don't, I don't believe that we've had a project that's came in that's wanted to develop on RM10. But again, as we're going through the LDO page by page and line by line, these are the things that are jumping out at us is that this, is, this always should have been 12 and a half feet, not 20 feet. So we, we brought the correction to the planning commission and the council. That was my question. I just didn't know how we got the 20 feet, how that was ever written in there. <coughs> That's why I asked if, excuse me, if it was ever voted on or it's supposed to be 12.5 feet, that's it. 12.5 feet is what it should have been. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Council, there being no further discussion, I call for the question. All in favor, please signal with the raise of your hand. Motion, Council, Councilman Gines, any opposed? Are you for? Motion carries unanimously. That'll bring us to 4E. Ordinance to amend the LDO pertaining to short-term rental and timeshare uses. Thank you. Again, this was Team Tisdell and Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence. You're gonna break, break this down for him, Jerry, explain what we're doing with the 20 and the 30s. Okay, at, you know, the council had asked that we conduct a public hearing to consider removing short-term rental from RM20 and RM30 zoning so that short-term rental would not be allowed in any residential zoned. And what that is, uh, this is the result. This is for your consideration to remove those from RM20 and RM30. Uh, the, the rest of the part of the ordinance is just us having to separate short-term rental from timeshares, you know, if if this goes through, if the council votes to remove short-term rental from RM20 and RM30, then we would have to separate those two in the table. Right now, they're, they're in one line item, short-term rental and timeshare. And so we would separate the two because they'll, have di they'll be uh, different requirements and allowed in different areas. That won't mess with anything that's already existing, will it? Any short-term rental that's been approved up to this point would be grandfathered in, and unless those people come in with a, a request to extend or expand, they would continue to be grandfathered in from now on. Councilman Tisdale, you were the second to the motion, or to um, you <coughs> seconded this motion. Uh, you have the floor. Yes, we would spent a, a lot of a lot of time, a lot of discussion on this RM20 and 30 with short-term rentals and apartments and individual units. Uh, and whole complexes, and, and, and this has continued over the years. So um, I, I would just think that everybody here would, would support prohibiting 
in the future short-term rentals in RM20 and RM30 zones. Thank you. Councilman uh, Gines, you were speaking. I'll let you continue. Oh, he answered my question. Okay, thank you. Councilman Baird. So, if my understanding is correct, this will eliminate any future short-term rentals going into any 20 or 30. Yes, sir. That's correct. But what's currently in effect. Now, have we, and since this has started, have we gotten an abundance of these that have come before us? For uh, RM20 and RM30? And RM30? Uh, we've, we've had some that have come in, but most of them that have come in have been conversions, yeah. okay. where there was an existing apartment building and they wanted to convert to short-term rental. And, uh, and, and we, we frown on that because you're taking a building that was not designed for that purpose, trying to convert it, and there's no way really to go back in and to install those safety features that should have been installed when it was first constructed. Yeah, I, I just, I can't support this. I think that there's conditions where, where some of them, um, I mean, I think that it's good where it's at. It's not like we have an abundance of these, and um, I just don't think that it's a, a one-fits-all deal. And, um, it's, I just feel, and it's not like we're getting hundreds of these and it's bogging us down or anything. I just feel like there's conditions where short-term rental does fit. And going back to last year when we changed the ordinance, I believe that this is one of the things that we changed when we changed the ordinance last year. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we just have to be real. Short-term rental is a part of the future of tourism. And I, I believe that there are situations where it fits and there are situations that it don't fit. But I think that if we just say, nope, all RM20, RM30, we're shortchanging ourselves as a tourist town. Uh, I just got back from Orlando this past weekend. I stayed in a, um, one night I stayed in a, a Airbnb. And um, you can go on and look and it's a huge tourist town and I would venture to say that they have just as many Airbnb and VRBO properties as they do hotels. And you know, there's a lot of hotels in Orlando. And I just think if, you know, we're billing ourselves as a tourist town, um, there are situations, yes, I agree, that it don't work. It doesn't go there. But there are situations that it does, I feel. And so I, I, I can't support this. Jerry. Do we have the, um, will we still have the option to use the condition of use in this area? Not if this passes. And, and let me mention a couple of things here too. We have a lot of single family houses that are located on property that zoned RM20 and RM30. And some of the ones that we've approved, like one on Briarfield, uh, his house happened to be in RM20 or RM30 zoning. I can't remember which one but that opened the door for him to be able to do it. Um, the second thing is, is that if we do leave this as conditional use, then every application that comes in would still have to go to the Planning Commission, still have to come to the City Council for approval. So you, you'd still be able to check uh, every application that we receive for it. So are you saying we can utilize the condition of use for, for special applications like what Nathan's talking about? No, if you vote to approve this, it will not be allowed in RM20 or RM30 at all, period. That'll, that'll end it. But if we keep it like it is, if we vote this down, every, every person that applies for an RM20 or 30 still has to go to planning commission and then it still has to come before us. That's correct. And like I said, it's not like we've had thousands of these to where it's bogging us down at the planning commission and in, in these meetings. And so I just think that this moves counterintuitive as far as, you, you know, tourism goes. Councilman Gladden. Yeah, so if we did pass this, the only option would be to change the zoning. That's correct. If it was RM20, they would have to go change it to um, commercial or, or whatever, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I want to echo what Councilman Barrett said. Uh, you know, we got areas that there are uh, these uh, short-term rentals and there's a piece of property right there next to them and the, the protocol has been, or at least we've, this is how we've kind of viewed it, if, if it was all single family homes around that development, normally uh, we voted it down. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but if there was some, uh, I guess, short-term rentals in the area and somebody's trying to develop a piece, that's when they come for conditional use under the current code. And we, we usually look favor more favorably on, on that. So uh, I hesitate, too. Some people think I'm in the industry. I'm against short-term rental. I'm not. Um, but I am against it intruding on single family homes where people have invested in their resident and that's the quiet enjoyment or the single family uh, enjoyment that they want. And then all of a sudden it gets encroached upon by, by short term rentals. So I tend to uh, be hesitant to, to vote for this measure as well. Councilman, Councilwoman Newman, Councilman Tisdale. Uh, yes. I'd like to just point out a few, just a few things. Um, one is you're reducing the apartment stock, which means those folks who traditionally, those families or individuals who live in apartment complexes, as more of these apartment complexes flip, either single units or the entire complex, we've seen some of that already, that's going to reduce your housing stock for those folks who live in apartments and can only afford apartments. That's the first thing. The second thing is, as we deal with, again, individual units in apartment complexes, we've had several of those, Jerry. Yes. I think two today, one on uh, somewhere in the vicinity of Southern Avenue and one there on Briarfield. I think those are the only two. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we dealt with condominiums. Remember originally on Highway 90, the old Saxony Apartments, which was, was that Cypress? Cypress Cove. Cypress Cove. And um, then we looked at the other um, apartment complex that flipped entirely to condo, uh, the condos rather, not apartments, but condos that flipped to short-term rentals there just to the east of White Pillars Restaurant. Can't remember the name. Is it Oak, Oak Shores? And then we have the apartment complex on Briarfield and uh, the apartment complex in several buildings there in Greater Biloxi. And we, this council has approved individual units within that complex. In the future, you're going, we, we are going to run into issues, I think, with being arbitrary and capricious as you decide which apartment complexes you're going to permit to have individual units that are put on the market as short-term rentals. That's going to prove troublesome, I believe. Uh, the other thing is, um, if I owned an apartment complex, I might be seriously thinking, because short-term rentals are a lucrative market, <clears throat> of changing the entire complex. And if I did that, just make the entire complex short-term rentals. But then however many units those were are no longer in the apartment stock for those families that, that live in apartments, if that's what they can afford. That's <clears throat> a gentrification issue. Um, I think that's all I want to say for the moment. There may be something else that triggers a thought. I'm not against short-term rentals, and this does not prohibit short-term rentals. What it does do is make clear that if exactly which You've got to be in a commercial area. I think there's one commercial area where short-term rentals cannot be. Is that neighborhood business? LB, LB, it's not allowed. Limited business. It's allowed in NB as a conditional use. And then the other zonings, including downtown, that allow hotels, it's allowed as a use by right. Yeah, I think, I think most of the areas where short-term rentals want to be, although I've sat in on a few uh, public hearings at the Planning Commission where people just want to flip a rental house as a short-term rental, uh, and it just, based on the location, and location is, is much of the appeal, and I get that, and, I, and Jerry's pointed that out a number of times. But I worry about the gentrification and who can and can't afford housing when you start using up your apartment stock and they start flipping to short-term rentals. So I'm not against short-term rentals. I just don't think we ought to reduce the apartment stock over time. I think it's going to be hard for us to remain consistent and not appear arbitrary and capricious since it's going to be a matter of time before we don't approve a conditional use for somebody and we'll be in court, as we are from time to time. Um, that's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Councilman Tisdale. Yeah, Robert. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something. 
This is pretty simple. You build a town from neighborhoods. You don't build a town from short-term rentals. We're trying to build a town. Short-term rentals is not, and 20 and 30 does us no good. You're creating, like you said, an old building. They're trying to turn something that's not really viable. But you, your city is built from neighborhoods and small businesses. We're not going to be sold out and we're going to be nothing but short-term rentals. You don't build a city like that. I'd be like taking Walmart and say, all right, think of Walmart going to be short-term rentals. There ain't no residents there. Ain't nobody to vote up there. You got to have people in your city. You have to live in your city. Short-term rentals is not the answer for the city of Bucks. It's really not the answer for anybody. It's like Uber. They run around and do what they want. Nobody got to, they has any control. You build your town, you eliminate spots. That's all you're doing. 20 and 30, don't need to be in there. We're not eliminating short-term rental. We're eliminating in spots where you're going to create problems when somebody got 20 or 30 apartments and going to turn into short-term rentals. And like he said, they can't comply. You have, to redo, you have to redo everything. So just eliminate the problem. Don't create a problem. Eliminate the problem. Have a solution first. We're not killing short-term rentals. If that's all they want to have and A, B, and B run your city, well, then fine. Then you all vote for this. But this is not the best thing for the city of Bucks at all. And when the Planning Commission come back and did this, they did it for a reason. The reason is you don't live off of short-term rentals. You live off people that live in your city, residents, apartment buildings, homes, residential homes. So I disagree with Nathan altogether. I really don't care what they do in Florida or anywhere else. That don't matter to me. We're dealing with the city of Bluxford. Dealing with the, the people that live here. And that's what we have to do. Short-term rentals is not the answer for anybody's city, period. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lawrence. And lastly, if I am lastly, do you want to say something? Else? I, I would just like to say, as far as the apartment conversion goes, I believe that we can go in and address this separately. I think that this is too broad sweeping. I believe that we could go in and address the, the, the apartment conversion and that be a complete separate issue instead of saying RM20 and RM30, you're out. Because like I said, I mean, there, there are situations where it does fit. To address the apartment conversion, that can be done separately in a different, you know, and just amend our um, ordinance on short-term rentals to address that issue. That's all. Thank you. Robert. So. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I kind of heard a, a few things, and this is not about changing apartments to, to short-term rentals, and I think we kind of got off track there. This is about the council having their door open to being able to make a decision for a special case. That's why they call it conditional use. And so do we want to throw that out? Our, uh, our option to review certain issues because there's a separate, you know, in, in every case, there's always a special issue. In every case, there's always something special there. And we want to keep that door open. And in my eyes, keep the door open. It's not about gentrification. When I heard gentrification, I'm like, well, that's a whole different subject. And that's not, we're not talking about gentrification. And we're not talking about changing apartments right now. We're not talking about throwing residents out so we can do all short-term rentals. We're talking about keeping our option open. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Guys. So just a few comments then. Most of what I feel has already been said. Councilman Tissa, I'll let you chime in. No, go ahead. Okay, no, I wanna to respond to Mr. Gines. I appreciate his comments, but we sat here last, last week, I mean, our last meeting, talking about a 48 unit, uh, uh, complex that was going to be nothing but short-term rentals and pretty much was a, a hotel <laughs> without uh, uh, being being called uh, a short-term rental complex. I believe Mr. Creel used the expression, if it walks like a duck, you may recall that. So we're dealing with this issue. We're going to continue to deal with these issues uh, if this measure is not approved today. Uh, I'm just... You can do what you want. Gentrification is an issue. If I own apartments and I can flip them to short-term rentals right now, that's where the money is. I can get rid of my residents. I don't know where they're going to go. Some will be homeless. Mark my words. You won't know that. They will know that. Mary Simons will know that. 
you'll see some of these folks on the street. That's just, that's just the fact. So we are dealing with some of these issues. We're going to continue to deal with these issues. This would certainly straighten out and avoid a lot of, a lot of these issues that we're going to have to face. So I won't, I won't tell you I, I told you so. George might. I won't do that, though. <laughs> George is the only one that will be around long enough to tell us I told you so. <laughs> be around long enough, uh, probably. Let, let me remind you, I think, I think he went to school with Keith Richards. I think they were classmates. <laughs> I think. That's it. Well, stay a minute. To sure. Say this back to, to Felix. The apartments are your problem. And allow, as long as you allow 20 and 30, which y'all going to vote for that, that's fine. You know, that's what we're going to do half the time at these meetings. Deal with all the twenties and thirties, and all the people want to come back and do this. Let me change my thing to short-term rental. It's not helping the city of Bucksy at all. You're not doing any good. You rather have apartment. People living in an apartment, let them stay apartment. So you want to vote for this here? That's what you're going to be dealing with. Everybody, their brother, going to come back and change. And it's be A, B, and B sucking up all the money. And if we ever get anything back from it, it'd be a miracle. So no, it's the worst thing in the world to do to your city. And if y'all feel like that. Then you voting against really the people living in the city of Bluffton. That's what you're doing. Thank you, Councilman Lawrence. Real uh, quick, real quick, that was just a little real quick rebuttal. Uh, if I recall, we did deal with that apartment issue and we did turn it down. And uh, and then turning down, that's our job to deal with each case. We're supposed to take every citizen and every re re request seriously, and we need to look at it. And we did our job. We turned it down. So that apartment complex didn't pan out because it came through the council, but it gave us an option. And sometimes you want that option. Thank you. Thank Please let me retort, if I may. If you can offer something new and you're not I will just offer something. The I will same offer thing. something new. This will address <clears throat> that point to my colleague in Ward 2 exactly. The same developer built a 36 unit complex okay apartments came back to us and the council on a split vote approved four of those units to be used as short term rentals now my question to you all is if I'm that developer and I come back 3 months from now and say you know I want to flip six more units from apartments to short term rentals how are you going to deny that developer and still not be arbitrary and capricious? In fact, rather than another six or 12 units, I just want to flip the rest of the apartment complex. At some point, you're going to say no, and that's when you're going to get hammered on the arbitrary and capricious issue. And we dealt, we argued the same thing on short-term rentals with the condos in Oak Shores. Was it? We, we went round and round on this. They flipped the whole unit. But once we get into these individual apartments and flipping them, then it doesn't stop. So that's it. I Mr. promise Tisdale. you I'm done. My retort okay, is I'm, finito. In, 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 well, let me get some things out real quick, because I've been waiting and I've been patiently letting you guys <laughs> tort and retort and, and back and forth. If, um, if I may, with, with all due respect, we can come up with an anecdotal situation that will shoot down everything that comes across our desks, every single thing. Fortunately, this isn't an issue that we're in, inundated with these, with these situations as of now, so it's not improving political economy or, or efficiency at all. Um, all we're doing is, is trying to shut down the opportunity, like you said, allow our discretion of this council to do the job that we're elected to do. Um, at some point, when we are inundated with these things, we can readdress this, but I agree with the majority of the council that, that um, I would rather reserve the right to do what we did last week and, and follow what we believe is the right thing to do and, and apply the law as we believe is not arbitrary or capricious. Um, secondly, the issue of housing stock the market will respond to the demand, Mr. Tisdale. If you have the money to open up one, and I've seen your house, it's very well decorated, I would probably rent from you. However, um, that will be a response by somebody with money that comes into the market that sees there's not enough housing stock for apartments and will generate a building that will, will uh, supply apartments for you and, and those that 
don't want to live next to a Airbnb, rent from them. Um, I think the most important thing, though, is retaining the discretion of the council. When we begin to subvert our political process, we lose the need to even have a political process. And I think this is something that we've proven in the weeks preceding us that we do that very well with regard to short-term rentals. And I'm like mind um, with the majority of the council that thinks this, this um, ordinance should remain as it sits now. Any other comments that we'll add to the intellectual conversation? I, I wanna add two things and then I'm done. You're on the clock. One, there's a difference in condos and apartments. Condos are owned by individuals. Apartments are owned by one person or one company. They own the property, they have the right. And so there's, there is a difference when someone comes to, to do that. Secondly, I'll echo what Robert said. If there becomes a demand for housing, the developers will build the housing. We have the land. And then three, you can go look at VRBO and you can go look at Airbnb. And those that would become homeless if their units were, if a shortage of housing are not the type of homes that are on Airbnb and VRBO. Um, it's just you can go look at it. Um, and, and so that's it. Thank you. Call for the question. I did one more. Ask Jerry a question. Uh, when y'all had, please, when y'all had this meeting, what was the reason that they voted for this, to bring this on the table as a proof? What was their big, the planning commission? What was their idea and why were they doing it this way? So they can listen to this. To give you a short answer, I think that they thought at the time that the uh, the city council wanted it this way. Um, you know, that might not be the only reason, but uh, any time that we go back to the planning commission, we tell them we've gotten a charge from the council to look at this again. I, I think that the way that they interpret that is that there's something wrong that needs to be corrected. And so I, I think, now, uh, we did, make them try to make them understand that the concern was that we're losing apartments or we're losing dwellings in our workforce inventory because people are now trying to convert over because they see the money potential here so they were aware of of that but uh, they voted for it they didn't specifically state well here's the reason that we're going to vote for this uh, but I, my personal opinion is is that the reason they voted for it was because they felt like that as a charge coming from the council that uh, the, the council may have wanted this corrected. Thank you, Jerry. And Thank you. Just before we call for the question, I'd like to say that we may not always agree with the outcome of the Planning Commission, but they do a great job with what they're doing. We charge them with a lot of, a lot of difficult tasks, and they've come through, and we believe in their discretion as much as our own. Um, I know there's there's a couple of important members that are in the in the from the planning commission that are in the room right now, and so thank you for your hard work. I'll call for the question. All in favor? All in favor? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> All in favor of the ordinance? Excuse me. That is correct. All in favor to amend the ordinance as written. I have Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Tisdale. All. Opposed to amending the ordinance as written. All of the five are against. So E fails. We'll move to F. Correct. Ordinance to amend a change in zoning for NB neighborhood business and RM30 high density to I industrial for properties identified as 211 Esther's Boulevard and an unaddressed parcel fronting to Magnolia Street. And this was originally moved by not Lawrence and Tisdale. <laughs> it's actually Felix Gines and Mr. Tisdale. Okay, give me a little update on it. What, what, the, what are they trying to build? M Murphy's Roofing already operates at this site. The majority of their property is already zoned industrial. They had two 
pieces of the property that were not zoned industrial. So what they're doing is a very reasonable request. That's already out. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Councilman Tisdale? Yeah, they're they're basically just expanding. Uh, their their business is picked up. There's um, uh, residential, I think, to the north of that, but multifamily residential. Mul multifamily. Yes, RM20 or RM? I'm kidding. RM30. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, their business is their business is picked up, and they just need more room. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Any other discussion on the council? All in favor? Signal to raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Let's bring us to resolution G. Resolution granting minor subdivision plat approval for property located at 1636 Pops Ferry Road. I'll make that motion. Got a motion by Kenny Glavin. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Paul Tisdale because he said it louder. Discussion? Yeah, uh, this is uh, by, I think, Motsi Road or whatever by the uh, Innovative Center. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We're dividing the Innovation Center from property that they have on the east side that goes up to Motsi. And uh, they're changing the innovation center to all medical. Uh, the people who were non-medical have moved out. They're opening the door for all of it to be medical. And they have a proposal for a medical facility to be located on this newly created lot. Excellent. Keep, okay. keep the development and diversity coming. I'd ask everybody to support this. Thank you, Councilman Tisdale. I can't add anything to what Mr. Glavin said. Thank you. Thank you Councilman Lawrence, you almost had a second in there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no big hit. All in favor? Is it wait? Is this qualify for any short-term rental or anything like that? Actually, it is zoned for it. I'll yeah. vote that in. Put a house on All top right. of it. <laughs> sure. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. This brings us to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Got a motion by Paul I'll Tisdale, say. a second by Felix Skines. Councilman Tisdale, is there anything on the consent agenda you wish to discuss today? Uh, yeah, I was look. I was looking for Mr. Abide. Yep. He's in the phone booth, changing into his Superman outfit. That's the only. One. I'll wait till uh, Mr. Abide's back. Hi, right, well, Mr. Tisdale reserves his comments. We'll move to Mr. Gines. I think I'm okay. Nothing. Councilman Glavin. I have nothing. I'm good. Councilman Barrett. I have nothing other than I'm recusing myself from item G. Councilman Lawrence. You want to go back to? Oh, Mr. Abide is in the room. We'll return to Councilman Tisdale. Uh, yes. On on item K, I just wanted Mr. A by this is a um, tri-party agreement for the facade and redevelopment incentive grant. And I just wanted Mr. A by just to review very briefly the, the purpose and process, Peter, if you can, and maybe 50 words or less. Sure. This is the, um, this is the facade, Peter A by city attorney. Uh, this is the facade grant uh, component, similar to what we did with the Machado Patano building. Uh, there is a, a total grant award for outside improvements of $42,000. There is over, over a period of seven years to be reimbursed from sales tax that will be generated from the property. Uh, this property, I don't think has generated any sales tax from even back before Katrina. I guess it used to be a an office of some sort. Uh, the property taxes, there's no portion of that that will be reimbursed, but it's 75% uh, of the anticipated new sales tax, which we estimate to be about $7,000, which would come up a year from now, and it would allow reimbursement of the improvements, a portion of the improvements put into the building. Um, the building owner, I believe, has put in about a million dollars into this project. He's now uh, leasing it to uh, another seafood business and 
it's going to be a good addition to downtown. We think this is a uh, a good project, and we ask for support. Mr. Abide, I, sp I spoke with Mr. Newman on this property, and he assured me that he was not going to bring forward an application for an abatement, which I think he would qualify for. Does this Main Street, and while I trust that he is not, does this Main Street grant application in any way preclude something like that from occurring? Uh, it, it probably would not, although um, we have to do a but for, and we look at the total project, we look at the, um, uh, what the county would do, the county would. Um, Ms. Newman, um, I think you, this, we're not done with that issue. <laughs> Not finished yet. Sorry. And she she abstained from this topic, so. Gotcha. Um, I don't think it would totally preclude it, although it's something we have to consider on a case by case basis, and it's something uh, you know the county and the city generally work hand in hand with these things. So um, the increment. I don't know what the increment would be, the amount of improvements that would be put in, but um, generally I don't know of anybody that's, um, I know with Machada, they were not really generating any sales tax that they knew they didn't expect to, so they got a component of property taxes out of theirs. Based on the amount of sales tax we saw that would come off of this, uh, it felt like it was a lot cleaner and a lot simpler just to do the sales tax rebate. Okay, thank you. And so the short answer is no, it doesn't preclude that. Um, right. Okay, thank you. Well, he, he did assure me that he wasn't gonna return with an abatement, so it makes me feel more comfortable to move forward with this. Um, thank you, I know this was Mr. Tisdale's time. I expect not. Mr. Lawrence. To me, this is the kind of product you need it's, it's huge retail, great sales tax, going to do well for the city of Bucks. It's going to bring a lot of people downtown. These are the kind of projects that we really need. The Machado, like you said, had a harder time because they don't have a great retail outlet. This here, with the, with the name and the seafood, you're going to have a great business. You're going to have a great sales tax. And this is what you need to do. This is what the purpose of these grants are. And I think this is one of the best ones we've done so far. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lawrence. Is there any further discussion? We'll return to Mr. Lawrence. Do you have any other items to discuss? Thank you for your if you would inform Ms. Newman that she um, is, is welcome to return. <laughs> Councilman Lawrence, do you have any items? Yeah, I'm gonna have a little discussion here on G. I don't know if Peter needs to be up here or Fofo. I know we did this, we extended this last time mm -hmm. on this for, year. For the record, let it reflect that Nathan Barrett has abstained from this item. I know we did. What I don't like about this here now is the option to sell. I don't think this property should be sold. I think this property is a huge piece of property in the city of Bluxy. I think whoever works with us needs a lease from the city of Bluxy and not sell it to them. So if we're doing this just to make sure they could buy it, then I don't want to support that. That's a huge piece of property. We can turn it in just like you did with the 2.7 million with the casino. It'd be better to lease the property, keep the property. You know, I don't care if you do 10 years, what you have to do. But why give the property away? That's eight and a half acres of pure land on Highway 90 and Howard Avenue. So to me, I don't think it should be sold. You want to lease it with them? Anybody like that, you want that put an option there? Fine. But I don't think the property, that property is too valuable. 20 years from now, that's ought to be $50 million, that property. But why give it away? But, you know, $8 million or $10 million or something like that. Just ain't worth it. You can't create more property. Yeah. It's all good. Well, this is not, an, this is not a sales contract. It's an extension of the previous contract, the previous agreement, the previous option agreement that was entered into a year or so ago. And under that agreement, in exchange for, for $50,000, they had a two year option time period and the right to extend that one additional year. And this is them asking 
exercising that renewal to go another year, the right they have under the contract. So we haven't gotten to the stage of, yes, the project's a go, yes, they wanna purchase the property, yes, they wanna talk about alternate arrangements, but this is to allow them the right to, uh, I guess, control the property for an additional year as they continue to, uh, to pursue their development. And, and I think we can say their, their pursuit has become more with private entities rather than public. That's really about all we can say. I understand that, but I mean, the thing is that as long as you extend this, it, then they have the right to buy it. And I think right now, I, I don't think we should be selling this property to anybody, not just them, anybody. Yep. If they, somebody wants to lease a whole eight and a half acres, then that's different. But that way we're making money and you're still on the property. It still comes back to us. So, still comes back to us, though, before we sell it or anything or make that decision to sell it. That's right. I, okay. Yeah. So, Continue for the discussion on G. Uh, is it possible you can amend that or you can't amend that? Uh, I mean, since that is set up the way it is. You just extended it. That's what he's asking. That was in the contract, so we're just there That's what the contract the says. We can always, we can talk to them about a different financial arrangement, but as I recall, it was, you know, the contract's in place. It's already in place, and, uh, you know, I think we just need to let it go, in my opinion. I, I think so. So, so this, this 50000 covers three years? Yes. Even though we have to extend it one more year, we have to vote on that? So you had two years already? No. Right. It'll be two years this November, and they're asking for an extension until the following November. Well, let, let me just add, that, you know, the, the support of, we're supportive of this because it, it is heating up and it's close. And I think the terms of uh, if it was to sell, uh, I think it would be a time and a half time appraisal anyhow, if it, if it worked. I think that's what the terms. So it's not, we're not giving this thing away. It's based on actual if this project comes together. They just asking for a, a, a number of months to pursue it, but it is heating up, and and uh, it has morphed from uh, getting sources from the the public to more private at this point in time. So it's it's worth the extension that uh, they're asking. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess my main question is, I don't mind extending it. I don't, I don't want to get in. We have to sell a property to them. That, that's, so we have the right as a council to stop that in a year from now. Then that's fine. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to automatically have to sell that to them or anybody is, else. Is it fair to say that that um, card is passed or whatever? Didn't we, we've discussed this already when we entered into this agreement, correct, Mr. Biden? I mean, the contract spells out if they exercise the option, it, the property will be appraised and they're going to pay somewhere over 110, 120% of the appraisal price. I don't have the original contracts in front of me, but. Uh, uh, they'd have that right unless you know they could say, well, would the city rather, uh, well, would the city rather take uh, a small amount of payment over a hundred years? I mean, I'm sure they'd love to do that, but I mean, we could always talk about that. But let, as let, I recall, it was you know the, let, the contract me, has been voted on. So. But the ball's in their court right now. We have we have an agreement, and it's their option to exercise the terms of the contract. Correct. It's their option right now to. Ex yeah, they were just renewing their option. Well, even they the other made a decision whether or not to purchase. But if they make the decision to purchase it, that's their decision, and we've agreed to terms of of 110 percent over the appraised value, the commercial appraised value of the of the property. And so that's their option. We've agreed to sell as long as they the as long as they purchase within the within the parameters by which the contract states. Right. Is that correct? That's correct. And I think the council still had to prove the overall concept of the project as well. Uh, to make sure we were satisfied with what the city would have to have to put in. So, Mr. Lawrence, we still have some opportunity to to change the tide if we if we so choose. I don't think that this option is going to address any of your concerns. But I think down the road we have plenty of time to address them. I, I have no problem extending. I just my problem is that that's fine. That's a fine problem. That's way better than 20 m. 20 what is it? Felix went 20 m and 30 r m. Them apartments. This is fine property, isn't it? This is this is a ton of money. I agree. This would make a great location for short-term rentals. Let's um. <laughs> a lot of trees. A lot of trees. <laughs> if we can move forward, um, 
Are there the any call. other items that you care to discuss? Uh, Peter, on what? On Forrest? Is that just the, you paying them the, the 5000 The 281 Forrest? Yes, sir. That's a grant. Uh, that's another one of the houses that was uh, moved from off of division and relocated next door to that other house on Forrest, just south of the of the uh, roundabout at Keesler Gate. So this is not paying them a five thousand. This just approves them that they're going to get five thousand. They 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 would be eligible to receive it after a certificate of occupancy, and after uh, everything checks out, they would get up to five thousand. They would they'd be entitled to a grant of five thousand dollars. All right. Thank you. That's it. That's all. Did I already come? Ms. Newman, do you have anything to discuss on the council? Uh, the consent agenda? Yeah. Did I get Barrett? All right, and we discussed H earlier, basically the parameters of what I want to talk about on H with uh, Ms. Um, Labata earlier. If we could move um, forward with a vote, all in favor of the consent agenda? Motion carries unanimously. I abstain from K. We have to remind the record that Ms. Newman abstained from K and Mr. Uh, Nathan Barrett abstained from G. This will bring us to the code enforcement hearings. There are none. We don't have one, do we? We don't have one. We have one. We don't. There's not a code enforcement. We don't have no code enforcement hearing. Well, this will bring us to the routine agenda then. I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion. We've got a motion by Paul Tisdale. Do I have a second? Second by Felix Gines. <clears throat> Councilman Tisdale. Let's let's hurry up and get to the budget workshop. We're tingling with anticipation. That is, this is the routine budget. I mean, the routine uh, agenda. I'll yield to Joel. Mr. Lawrence, the floor is yours. Hey, Walt. Uh, you got any good news for? You know, you hadn't been in last week. They were terrible. Fofo didn't do anything good for his last week. What you got? Walt Rohde, Infrastructure Program Manager, City of Biloxi. We, I was emailing MEMA today and was reflecting on it's been a while since we've had any money in the pipeline. We have another $708,000 that should be showing up uh, shortly within the uh, MEMA website, and so we'll have that within a couple weeks. Just want to remind Council we're uh, still flush with uh, advances and reimbursements from MEMA prior to uh, the slowdown in the construction period. So. At this time, we're still well in advance of uh, our needs. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. Lawrence? Is there anything on the council with regard to the routine agenda? There being none, I call for a question. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Do I have a motion to recess? So moved. A motion um, to recess by Paul Tisdale. I have a quick note. I did, I did um, make a note that um, we're going to have the COVID screening Thursday. I just got a message that it, we're going to postpone it because of uh, uh, storms are expected Thursday. So we're going to reschedule it. So the COVID-19 screening in East Biloxi is going to be postponed Thursday. Thank you. Do I have a second on uh, motion to recess? Second by Kenny Glavin. All in favor? We stand in recess. However, we have a special council meeting directly following the scheduled meeting for our budget hearings. If we take five minutes and, and return back to the chambers. Oh, okay.